Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and making it possible. Hello and welcome to another video. Today I am at Viracopos Airport here in Campinas next to Sao Paulo. This is actually Sao Paulo's third airport and this is where Azul Airlines have their main operating base. That's who I'm flying with today. I'm flying with Azul back from Sao Paulo Campinas to Lisbon in Portugal. It's going to be about nine to nine and a half hours in business class. I'm really looking forward to it. This is a rather different airline for a few reasons. Let's go check it out. By road, Viracopos is over an hour from Sao Paulo, but Azul lay on a free bus, whether you're traveling in business or economy class. The bus drops you right outside the terminal and your bags travel in a locked compartment underneath the seats. There's no need and in fact no way to book the bus. You just turn up and get on. My bus was not particularly busy and I think there's a very low risk of you not being able to get on board. I was actually quite surprised to find that Viracopos Airport was historically the original main international airport of Sao Paulo. The main airport now is at Guararos and that opened in 1985. One thing I should say if you're flying from here is to go down to the basement, the arrivals level, because this is where most of the places worth eating and drinking are. This is not particularly well signposted if you come in at street level. Check-in was completely painless and took only a couple of minutes. Business class check-in was absolutely deserted. There's also an Azul lounge which is located on the first floor immediately after security. I think it's important to stress before I get into this trip report that Azul are not a legacy airline. They're a relatively new entrant to the market. As such, they pitch their product and their pricing a fair bit below the competition in order to attract a different market. So don't expect any hot meals in the lounge or a particularly inspiring range of food and drink. In all honesty, my flight was over nine hours long, so I was planning to eat on board anyway. There's no compelling need for pre-flight dining here. So it's far from being the world's best business class lounge, but to be honest, it's a perfectly adequate place to hang out for an hour before your flight departs. Just heading down now to gate A08 for my flight to Lisbon. Now, walking around this international arm of the airport, I can't help but notice there are only three international flights departing this evening. My one to Lisbon, uh, one behind me to Porto, and another one to Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Now, this airport, I was Googling uh, Viracopos Airport and noticed two things. Firstly, uh, the reason this airport, uh, the international arm, is so quiet is because there's a recession uh, on in Brazil that is just working its way out of at the moment. And that means that this airport hasn't been able to attract the traffic um, that it was originally supposed to. The second interesting thing that I found out about this airport is the name Viracopos means to turn over glasses in quick succession, according to Wikipedia. Now, loosely translated, that means uh, to get drunk or to consume a lot of alcohol at once. And I think that's one of the best names for an airport I've ever heard. Another one that really comes to mind is the name of Sofia's airport, which is in Vrazdebna uh, in Bulgaria, just outside Sofia. Uh, Vrazdebna is a town and that basically means hostile, uh, which is definitely the other end of the scale for airport names. Um, so that's a bit of trivia for you. Just waiting for priority boarding to happen um, and yeah, looking forward to getting on board and finding out what this unique airline is all about. My flight today would be operated by this Airbus A330 in a special blue livery. A quick reminder that you can catch all of my trip reports in written format on Simple Flying. The link to the article is in the description below. Hello. Okay, thank you. Business class occupies the front cabin and is in a staggered one to one configuration. True window seats like this one here, 4A, are the best ones to have because they offer optimum privacy. However, I was stuck in 5C, which is one which adjoins the aisle. There was a pre-flight choice of wine, water or orange juice and a small chocolate served before takeoff.
takeoff was brisk and smooth and into a beautiful Brazilian sunset. Lisbon is 4,908 miles from Viracopos and the flying time of this flight was 9 hours and 25 minutes. The type of seat used in business class is called the Sojourner Solstice Seat and you can find this on various other airlines including Etihad. It isn't the most up-to-date seat on the market but what I do like about this seat is the fact that you can move your seat forward to meet the table rather than the other way around. There's also in-seat charging and this little device here is the remote control for controlling the in-flight entertainment screen. Azul is a Brazilian airline. Most of its market comprises the domestic Brazilian aviation market and also in connecting Brazil with its cultural cousins in Portugal. However, it does also operate some flights to the US and that means there's an extensive English language selection of film and TV shows. However, don't expect miracles from the headphones. My friend Jeb Brooks is probably the person you're gonna to want to speak to if you want some decent ones. Sadly, Azul has yet to fit its aircraft with Wi-Fi. Azul was founded by David Neeleman, the same person that founded JetBlue in the US. The commitment to enthusiastic and personable service was obvious to see. The cabin crew working my aisle gave me exactly the same kind of enthusiastic service that I'd come to expect from JetBlue, who are my favorite US domestic carrier. All of that being said, I can't say that the food was a particular highlight on board this flight. If you followed my channel for a while, you'll know that this year I've flown quite a few international business class products and I've been really impressed in general with the standard of food. There was nothing particularly wrong with the food on board Azul, but it didn't really live up to the heights offered by some of the main legacy airlines that I've tried. There was nothing in particular that was wrong with the food, but I have to say that I won't remember these dishes much beyond making this video. Still, I was pretty happy to see ice cream as a dessert option because that is supposed to be something you can't get wrong. Isn't that right, Delta Airlines? Azul hand out amenity kits in business class on all of their long haul flights. And the bag is reasonably attractive and pretty well stocked in fact with all of the things that you would expect on a long haul flight. Talking of toiletries, the toilet itself was very clean throughout the flight. The little blue light at the bottom of the console there is a little nod, an inexpensive one too, towards the company's colour scheme. I spent the rest of the evening watching The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, starring Ben Stiller. My advice for this film is to avoid it like the plague. Soon it was time to turn in for the night, and one of the benefits of these solstice seats is the fact there's plenty of storage, so if you change into your pyjamas like I do, there's plenty of room to shove your clothes into one of the storage units. In common with many airlines now, there's no turn down service in business class, so you need to lie your sleep fat yourself and pop out the bedding, which is pretty easy to do. However, there's no sheet or mattress topper provided. I was a bit worried that having an aisle seat, I'd be disturbed during the night, but thankfully this didn't happen, and the seat was really comfortable and perfectly wide enough for me to get a solid six hours of sleep, which is all I asked for on a long flight. About an hour from Lisbon, I was woken by the crew, as I requested, for my breakfast. The mood lighting was turned an attractive orangey pink to resemble the dawn and to get everyone's body clocks back in sync. Breakfast, just like dinner, was fine and inoffensive, but in equal measure, completely unmemorable. With breakfasts, I often use the same principle as ice cream. I try and pick the dish that I think is least likely to go wrong. In this case, it was an omelette. So let me conclude this video with a summary. I paid 950 euros one way for this flight, which was from Sao Paulo Viracopos to Lisbon and then on to London with Tap Air Portugal, a code share partner of Azul. Now this is really, really cheap. It equates to around 855 pounds sterling or about 1,050 US dollars. That price is extremely cheap in the grand scheme of things. And so I'm perfectly happy that my experience with Azul was mostly okay. There was nothing in particular that was wrong with the experience and although the experience itself didn't hit the heady heights of some of the business class products I've tried this year, that's fine because it was an awful lot cheaper. Squarespace gives you a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. I love Squarespace's traffic overview feature. The analytics means you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your posting. 
In fact, I love Squarespace so much that I use them for my own website, which I set up at the beginning of this year. Site management is easy. Squarespace allows you to edit your posts and comments on the go using their mobile app. Interested? Go to squarespace.com forward slash winginit to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you subscribe for more content just like this.